I have myopia. Now what? In this episode of Aki Talk, optometrist Sabrina Gunn explains what myopia is and what can be done to slow its progression and potentially eliminate the need for glasses. Dr. Gunn? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Welcome everybody uh, to Aki Talk. We're going to be talking with Dr. Sabrina Nagan today. Uh, she's an OD out of Plainsville, Massachusetts. So uh, good to meet you. you. What is it? Plainville. Thank you. Plainville, Massachusetts. Well, it's good to meet you. Thank you. So let's, uh, you know, we always start these out by just getting a little background about the doctor and, uh, you know, how, how did you get into optometry? Uh, what led you to uh, the field you're in today? That sort of thing. Um, I wanted to be an optometrist when I was like 13. So I had perfect vision and I basically just wanted to uh, get into it because I really liked my eye exam, my first eye exam. I thought it was really cool and I wanted to be in medicine, but I didn't want anything messy. So I thought optometry was great. Um, grew up in the Bay Area and moved to Chicago for school and now I'm in Boston. So, Oh, well, you've been uh, all over the place then. Yeah. We know on the uh, discussion today was to talk about myopia, and I know this is a subject we've talked about uh, on the channel before, but it's, it, it's certainly a, a big subject and something a lot of people deal with. Uh, so why don't you give us a little bit of background? Uh, you know, some of us may know what myopia is. Uh, some of us may not know what myopia is. So uh, could you give me just a little bit of background on that? What, what is myopia, first of all? Well, myopia is nearsightedness. So when you think nearsighted, you can only see near, nearsighted, right? So people always mix that up. They always think it's farsighted, um, but you need glasses for distance. Um, and the problem is, is if it starts really young as a child, you know, they're growing as a kid. So they're progressing really fast. If it starts later in life, uh, the progression is a lot slower. So it's interesting you talk about that starting later in life. You know, I think a lot of us think that, uh, you know, whatever eyes you have, that's what you have, right? Uh, so yeah. so what are kind of the, the symptoms? How does it start later? So people like sometimes when they go to college, you know, like they get into their 20s and they start to notice like their driving is a little blurrier. Um, they can't see the board, you know, in college or whatnot. Then they go in for their eye exam. They, it usually starts a little earlier than that, but usually um, they go in and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know what I was missing. Um, but when you have like an eight-year-old, a lot of times they don't even realize that they're blurry. And so that's why they do school screenings, you know, to catch them. Um, but even the school screenings sometimes uh, don't catch it early enough. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you say that. I think that's something we've talked about on the channel before, right? Like if you're born like that and you've always been, uh, you know, uh, having myopia with that, like you don't know any different, right? Like as a child, you don't know that that's not the way you're supposed to see, right? And so that's uh, why those vision screenings are really important. You're, you're born farsighted, you know, so you're born with um, different vision. And then as you grow older, your eyes grow longer. And so, you know, you 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 zero out and then some kids they become nearsighted some kids stay zero for a long time so it just depends well let's talk about that a little bit um you know i, I think you you touched on a little bit that it's kind of the shape of the eye that determines this um is is that just something that naturally occurs or are there things that people could be doing that causes it like, where does that come from well a lot of the problem is, you know, lack of distance viewing these days. You know, all these kids are on screens and they're all, um, you know, obviously when we were younger, we read a lot. We read a lot of books and everything. And, you know, if you don't get enough distance viewing or outside playtime, you don't get enough vitamin D, things like that. It's really it makes a difference. So if you are an outdoor kid, you have a better chance of, you know, becoming less nearsighted than a kid who's indoor playing video games all day. You know, so I, uh, I've heard this before, right? And, and so how, how big of an effect uh, does that have uh, on, on vision? Uh, in other words, if, uh, should everybody be going outside to try to make sure that they, that they don't have these issues? Or, you know, uh, yeah. what can we do? There are actually like outdoor schools in like China because um, it's such an epidemic over there because 
you know, myopia is such a problem. Um, so yeah, they're actually trying to have like outdoor schools. So you do a lot of distance viewing. Um, here they say like, oh, at least two hours a day, um, which isn't very much really. No. Um, but, you know, I, you know, sometimes it's cold. Like today it's like 20 something degrees, you know, in Boston. Um, so my kids, it's like, well, I try to get them to watch TV instead of a tablet you know, right. something further away from their face so that their um, eyes are set at distance. Um, if it's warm enough, we'll go outside. But a lot of times, like in the wintertime, there's no chance, you know. Oh, yeah. That, not not at 20 degrees outside. <laughs> okay. So we, we've talked about some of the causes, right? We've talked about some of the biological causes, some of the environmental causes. So if I have myopia, what can I do? Or like, obviously, we can wear glasses, but but what does that even mean? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're older and your eyes are not progressing, then, you know, glasses is fine. But um, what we try to do is when we start to see myopia occurring early, um, usually on the average between eight and 12 years old, um, we fit contact lenses because there are different types of contact lenses that can slow down the progression. And, you know, I've been fitting those for at least 14 years now. Um, you know, overnight retainers work really well. They, you know, have a special design to, to slow the progression down. And now they have soft lens options, which is even better for a lot of kids who are scared of the retainers or who have maxed out on their prescription for the retainers. Um, the soft lens options are great. So you can actually stop the progression. You know, that's a very interesting topic, uh, Dr. Gunn. Can you expand on that a little? Like how do contacts um, change myopia? So the retainers, for example, if you wear them when you go to sleep, they're like hard contacts. They're small little hard contacts. You pop them in before you go to bed and um, it molds the cornea. So it flattens the center of the cornea. So that way, when they take them out, they can see all day. And, um, you know, the kids don't have or adults even don't have to wear um, contacts or glasses during the day. And then the outer edge is blurry on purpose so that it kind of tricks the light when it comes in. So the eye doesn't grow longer. It's a crazy science. It, that is crazy. Now, let me ask you this. Is there a, is there a window of opportunity, if you will, uh, that, uh, that where you can do these sort of corrections? And does that window expire at any point? Uh, the earlier, the better. You know, like I said, 8 to 12 is ideal. Um, but I have some kids who they progressed really, really fast in their teens. And so, you know, we catch them in their teens. It just depends on when they start. Um, but the earlier, the better. You know, uh, as far as uh, how old I've done 20 year olds, you know, 20 something year olds, um, because they started later and they don't want to wear glasses or, you know, they like the idea of the overnight retainers because it's really easy. And some of the patients actually, um, do really well with them because they have drier eyes. So like right. soft contacts were really bothersome to them during the day. So I put them in the retainers and they love them. So how how big of a, a correction are we talking here when we compare uh, retainers, obviously over a period of time, to glasses? I've, I've done up to a minus six. Really? So that's what I'm comfortable with. I, I don't really, you know, I know that there's, there are a lot of doctors who are really good at this and they do up to minus 10. And, um, you know, the the visual zone is a lot smaller and I just, I'm not really comfortable doing those, um, but I'll go up to a minus six. So uh, expand for our viewers just a little bit when we're talking about minus six or, you know, minus five, these different uh, variations. What are we talking about? Blind. When you're minus six, you can't get up and go to the bathroom without glasses on. You know, um, it's, a, you know, a pretty mild prescription. It's like a minus one. Um, you need glasses for maybe driving, you know, um, definitely driving at night. But you probably can legally drive, you know, with glasses in a minus one. Um but yeah, as you get into that minus two and up, it gets really debilitating without glasses. You really can't see across the hall, you know, down the hallway or whatnot without anything. So uh, let's let's imagine uh, I, I had a teenage child, and I do, by the way, <laughs> um, and um, uh, and he he wears glasses. Um, is is there a uh, is there a range? Like in other words, if I'm a you know if I'm a minus one, it's okay. If I'm a minus six, we really need to do something. Uh, you know, uh, how does that work? You know, the, again, the earlier the better. So if he's a minus one, I would jump on it because he's only 16, he's going to progress. You know, it's it's not done yet just because he's a teenager. Um, I, you know, one of my best friends when we were in college, 
she was a minus four. And by the time she became in her late twenties, she was a minus 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So ultimately we should have stopped it, <laughs> but yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't an optometrist back then, so I couldn't help her. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really interesting because uh, I, you know, the, the typical solution, right. Is like, let's just put some frames on them and, and go. Right. Um, but it, it's interesting to know that there are more permanent type solutions that can actually, rather than being, uh, you know, an aid can actually help solve the problem. The hard part is like people always see a minus one prescription and they say, oh, just get him glasses. It's not that bad. But you could actually stop that from progressing. So why wouldn't you, you know? So I'm trying to get that into my associates um, heads and it's work, you know, they're finally on board with like, okay, you know, we should do this sooner. Why are we waiting? You know, why wait until they're minus two or three when they're really blind? Like you should do it on the earlier side so that they can enjoy the benefits of having a mild prescription their whole life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, uh, glasses and contacts may not be the most inconvenient thing, but I can tell you it's more inconvenient than not having them at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so I think what what's it, we're talking about your typical treatment protocol a little bit here, right? Like we've we've talked about uh, you know the overnight, uh, you know the different things we can do. Is that the t typical treatment regimen? And if not, like what are the different variations, and where do you uh, where do you make the DMARC? Um, I mostly do ortho K, which is the retainers. You know, um, that is my go-to, um, you know, the kids are really successful. And when they start out like that, they don't know any better. So um, that's my typical treatment protocol. That's what I shoot for. Um, you know, some want to go into soft lenses, so I'll do the my sight lenses. Um, but ultimately, I pretty much do ortho K. You know, if, if they're really opposed to it, we'll do glasses for a year, and then we'll retalk about it the next year. But usually, if we've talked about it before, and then the parents see their prescription go up the next year, then they're like, okay, we need to do something about it. I bet. I bet. And then, so if I'm if I'm doing the ortho K or I'm, I'm using these lenses, what do I need to know, right? Like, I, I know you described it a little bit uh, about talking about something you wear overnight. Is there any special considerations or anything like that that I need to know when going through this uh, process? Um, I mean, ultimately, it's whether or not you're a good candidate, right? So the doctor is going to determine that. Um, sometimes if there's we can correct astigmatism, but sometimes if there's too much astigmatism or they have a crazy looking cornea, then it's not a good option, right? Um, but there are soft lens options for that. Um, you know, it's really just whether or not the kids are scared, you know? So sometimes I have to tell them, why don't you go home and practice touching your eyes for a little bit, you know, and see if um, you can get over that reflex, you know? Because once they get over that, they're fine. And I always tell the kids, or I tell the kids when in their in my chair and they're little, I'm like, you're gonna hate me for like three days, but then you're gonna love me, you know. Yeah. After you sleep in them for one or two nights and you see how good your vision is, you're gonna love me, but you're gonna really hate me at first, okay? And they just start laughing, and it builds a little bit of the trust there, you know. So it's a good way to um, kind of get them on board with everything. Well, I, I can understand it. It's almost like people using a CPAP, right? Like you don't like it at first, but I promise you it'll be better. <laughs> Once you get used to it, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, that's a great idea. So how long does the, the process take if, if I were using ortho K lenses uh, to, to sort of reshape? So, I mean, like a minus one, they overnight, they can see the next morning. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's really amazing. And then it lasts longer each day that you do them. Um, so if you're minus four, it might take like a week or two, you know, depends on how soft the cornea is. But every single day, like the very first night is always the most uh, rewarding because the kids wake up and they're like, oh my gosh, I see so much better. And then it gets them to continue, you know? So I always tell the parents, I'm like, don't worry, they'll get over this. I know it like they hate it right now, but cause you know, some, some of the kids, they do cry when you first do that first fitting because they're not used to anything being in their eye. And sometimes the parents, I'll have them put them in for them and take them out, you know, because it depends on how little they are. Um, but I, I'm always, you know, very like, don't worry, it's going to be great. And everyone will be happy once it's all done. And they are, you know, it just takes a little time. 
Well, I think contacts in general is uh, something that you got to get used to, right? Like you were taught your whole life, don't put your finger in your eye. <laughs> well, you have reflexes, right? So. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, I, I've often said uh, I would have supreme difficulty with it, honestly. Like uh, uh, you have to see my son the way he does it. He like attacks his eye. He sneaks it up from under here and then it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, very good. Well, well. So, if if this were something I were considering, so say I I have myopia, or I have a, a person in my family that that is dealing with myopia, and say we've been wearing glasses, how can I how can I go down this path? Who do I need to talk to? What do I need to talk about? Well, I mean, not every eye doctor fits them, right? So it depends on if you want soft contacts or if you want the retainers. Um, I'm a Paragon doctor, so I, I use um, Paragon Vision um, CRT lenses. That's like my go-to. I've just been using them for so long. So they have a website and you can find a practitioner on their website. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately it's, it's really not hard to do. And now that um, a lot of doctors have gotten, you know, on board with fitting these, um, it's a little more readily available, but you should definitely talk to your eye doctor. Well, very good. Well, we've got a little bit of time here left to wrap up. Is there is there anything specific you'd like the audience to know uh, regarding myopia, regarding you, uh, life in general? <laughs> um, let's see. Well, I mean, my specialties are myopia and dry eye, right? So a lot of people know about my dry eye, you know, specialty. Um, but myopia is actually my first my first love. So that's what I graduate. I gra graduated at a school, and I kind of got inherited this older doctor was doing you know ortho k and i basically just inherited all his patients so i kind of got thrown into it um so here i am at like 28 years old just trying to figure it out on my own but um it's something that is very rewarding especially to see kids and like their faces and how excited they are and then to see every single year they haven't changed is is life changing. So any doctors who are not doing it, they really need to get on board with doing it and, and, or even just offer it, you know, to another, uh, you know, provider just saying like, Hey, you know, I know this doctor who does it, you know, if you don't want to fit them yourself, but ultimately they make it really easy now, you know, you just have to send in the, the measurements and they'll make you a lens and mail it to you. It's quite easy. That is really interesting. It's, it, it, I think we've gotten a lot of good information today. Uh, we've talked about myopia on the channel, but typically we talk about it in general medical terms, right? And not so much in the corrective action. So this has been a very I interesting conversation. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, Dr. Gunn, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, and uh, if... It, if anybody has any comments or uh, questions, we can certainly post them uh, down in the comments below and uh, we'll try to get to them. So thank you very much and uh, we will see everybody again next time.